Hey everybody, thanks for joining us uh, for another edition of Rottweiler Garage. Um, today we had a, an interesting opportunity here. We have a, a 2017 KTM Adventure 1290R project bike that, going, that we're going to be building up, uh, that we're going to showcase in one of our bike builds and take out to the KTM rally here in the next month or so. And uh, we had a unique opportunity uh, while it was laid out in this configuration to show everybody exactly where the emissions lines uh, are laid out. So you can see this motorcycle is, is got a lot of pieces taken off of it. The suspension has been taken off, sent to conflict, the wheels are getting redone, a bunch of other things. So what we don't want you to do is get intimidated uh, by what you're looking at here. It's not, you don't have to take this much stuff off the bike, obviously. Uh, we just have it, uh, happen to have it in this configuration right now. So what you do need to take off um, to remove the emissions if you choose to do so. Now I have to throw the disclaimer out. Uh, you really should only do this where you're allowed to do it. So if you're racing uh, or you're in a country that allows to do it, um, this tutorial is for you. Uh, or if you're just wondering where uh, and how the emissions lines work on a KTM uh, large twin, uh, then we're going to show you here today using this uh, 1290R Adventure. So all the big twins are basically the same. Uh, the layout might be slightly different, but uh, in essence, it's, it's all the same. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, use this opportunity while the thing's apart and show you where everything is laid out and just to give you a really good idea of, of uh, where to find objects when they're called out in certain instructions. Now we have seen some YouTube videos that are fairly inaccurate where they're either showing you um, to take off too many items or um, they're, they're just not quite right. So we kind of wanted to put that to bed. Um, and the bottom line is all you really need to do is take off the fuel tank um, and pop off the air box. So if you're doing a Rottweiler intake system, you're going to take off the airbox anyway and everything's accessible. Uh, if you're insane and you're going to keep the stock airbox, then uh, all you have to do is take out the velocity stacks and lift it up and you can access the SAS uh, system right below it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by walking you through the canister system. So uh, everyone on the forums has heard of the canister valve or the canisterectomy. That's your boy right there. And it basically sits on the side of the frame on the um, uh, 1050 through 1290 Adventure. On the 990 Adventure, you'll find it kind of up in here. And on various bikes, it might be in different spots. But for this bike, it's basically right there. And how this basically works is uh, you've got two lines on top of the fuel tank. Uh, one that, that plugs in the left and one that plugs in the right, right over here. And what we're going to do is walk over and show you this fuel tank. Now, the top of this fuel tank, this is the one on the left. This is the one on the right. The one on the left, basically, uh, you'll notice there's a little dish inside the top of this thing. And that little dish is meant to catch any water that might seep down through these cracks or when you open it up in a rain, um, in a rainy situation. And this is just an evacuation. It just basically just drains down um, on the side of the engine here. Uh, you see these hoses. Uh, one of the drains is that hose. It's, it's really that simple. And on the earlier Euro models before Euro 4... Uh, you'll notice there's some of these lines here, and what they did is this line right here, this is the one that goes to the canister. And if the vehicle does not have a canister, um, a charcoal canister, basically that line would come around here and join into this line right over here. So that's the reason for these marks right here. So what this is right here is uh, there's a check valve inside here. So basically if the bike tips over, uh, it won't puke all its fuel out. Uh, but when it's in an upright position, that check valve is open and it allows the gasoline fumes, the fumes that are rising off the fuel, uh, to get stored in the canister compartment here. And this is loaded with charcoal. So the way all this works is basically we've got this line right here that we talked about. And that will travel through the frame. So you can see it traveling right here through the frame. And we're basically going to follow it through. Now right here... You're going to see there's a bit of a Y uh, section, okay? Let's see if we can get it to focus. And it splits off. And what that is, is that drains down to this thicker tube here. And the reason they added these things is if fuel, uh, if the bike were, were to get tipped over and fuel got into the canister, um, upon return, a lot of times, uh, little chunks of, of uh, charcoal would get in your fuel tank and, and mess up your fuel pump. So this is kind of a... Uh, uh, actually, you can see it right here. They just dip that down in a Y, so if there's anything it, 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 that gets in the system that's, uh, that's foreign, it's not going to end up in your fuel tank. It basically allows you to uh, drain this every once in a while. So basically, that line travels back 
along the frame and you'll see this whole group of cables here and this whole group of cables one of these lines is it so what we can do is just pull on it here and it's it's this line so this is the uh out from the tank line and you can see we remove the side pod so you can see where it travels uh, and it basically goes up through the side of the bike and it runs up and that is what goes to tank okay so this tank right there so that line goes it comes from the tank now the purge is the other line that travels back along the frame so that purge is basically this second line here and that line travels through the frame back to the canister valve here okay now past the canister valve this will go down into the abyss and it'll split into two to the throttle bodies and the point of this is basically when the bike is off this valve closes so it's sent uh, a signal uh, from this plug here so if you're doing emissions removal this is where you would put uh, your canister dongle right here you basically unplug this and plug it into there and so what this does is when the bike is started this valve opens and it draws a vacuum on this tank here so this whole tank is filled with little bits and pieces of charcoal that look like black rice and it absorbs all the fumes from the fuel tank and when you start the bike that valve opens it draws a vacuum there's a little check valve right here that allows air through here uh, and you can see the two lines right there and on the purge side it draws a vacuum through and draws the fumes through and basically what they want the engine to do is consume those those fumes so if you're doing a, an emissions delete this is the one that you would plug with this little part here so you would unplug this here and and you, all you have to do is plug that uh, because this basically goes down to the throttle bodies and you can draw uh, uh, dirty air into them if you don't plug it. Um, you would put your dongle here and basically this line would get repurposed to join the other line and go down on the side of the engine like that. And that's really all there is to the canister system uh, on the 1290 Adventure. There's a lot of weight uh, to be reduced when removing that. These, these hoses are not exactly lightweight. Uh, there's a mile of them and uh, a lot of people just want to use this space back here for tools it opens up a ton of space so this all comes out pretty easily you don't have to take off the side pod here uh, you can really just pop the uh, the tubes off here and draw them through there is a little rubber strap right here that might give you a little bit of a hard time uh, so if you want to pop the side pod off and then just pop that off that'll free those guys up and they'll pull right through so again cap this guy Put the dongle there and then just run the right hand line down to the side of the engine it's that simple there's nothing else you're missing now what we're going to do is talk about the sas system so sas stands for secondary air system or sai as it's uh, listed in the book secondary air injection and if you remember cars used to have smog pumps and that would uh, what that meant is that they pumped air into the exhaust well in this case what they do is they steal oxygen from the air box and inject it into the exhaust ports. So right here, here's the front cylinder. And on the back side of these, there's a bit of a reed valve. It's a metal reed valve that only uh, allows air one way. So if there's ever an event of a backfire in, inside the exhaust system, it's not gonna backfire up into the air box. And what this does is it uses this valve right here. So you can see we've removed the air box. This, this kind of stakes in with these rubber parts here to the bottom of the air box. And if you're doing emissions, again, this is what you'd unplug right here and you'd plug our, uh, our uh, dongle into that. So this tube right here, this draws air from the air box. So if you're doing our intake system, you don't need to plug anything. If you, again, if you're, if you're gonna keep the, the stock air box, why would you? Uh, you would need to plug the hole in the stock air box and we do offer a little rubber cap for that in our emissions kits two and three. So, Basically, this valve right here draws air into here, and then the valve opens up, and it splits into two. Now, this hose goes to uh, the rear cylinder, and this hose goes to the front cylinder here. So that is the, the, this, the hose, one and the same. And what that does is it injects oxygen into the exhaust system uh, to burn off the hydrocarbons a little bit quicker and to light off the cap a little bit quicker. So when oxygen uh, hits the catalytic converter, it lights it off a little quicker. Now on this bike, we don't have a catalytic converter, so this system is basically useless. So we're going to remove it. So basically, what you'd end up doing is taking our uh, SAS plates uh, and replacing them on here and removing this entire system. 
Uh, capping the stock airbox, you'll be going to keep it. You don't have to worry about it if you're doing a Rottweiler intake system. And then you're going to plug a dongle into here and the whole octopus of parts will just pull straight out. Um, if you never think you're going to use it again, which you're not, you can just cut these and pull the stuff out uh, pretty easily. But um, that's the entirety of the SAS system. That's basically it. It's very simple. You've got a plug here. You've got a, uh, a pairing valve, they call it. And it draws in oxygen there. And, and basically, um, at idle, when you start the bike, it uses the low pressure pulses from the exhaust to draw air from the airbox here and then pull it through these ports and inject it straight into the exhaust ports right there. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Again, it's not as complicated as it looks. Uh, this does intimidate some people, and we wanted to make this video to kind of show you exactly where all this stuff was located uh, on a bike and to make uh, reading the instructions and removing the emissions if you choose to do so uh, that much easier. So thanks for watching.